Today I took a walk. Today I took a walk with you in my heart. After the rain had stopped, we walked along the street behind the house, admiring the autumnal colors of the five-fingered ivy hanging from the birch tree next to the old brick water tower like Rapunzel's hair. You loved how all the colorful leaves dappled the asphalt. When we took the turn by the construction fence to cross the main street, I showed you the dark daisy still flowering behind the glass container. We both took a picture, trying to catch one of the blossoms that were swaying in the October breeze. As we crossed the main street, you silently switched from my left to my right side to screen me from the incoming traffic, or gentlemen. When we arrived at the other side of the street, I could feel your hand reaching out for mine, again on my left side, so my purse would not be in our way. Your strong fingers softly slid into my palm to interlace with my fingers. We didn't look at each other and only felt the touch of our hands. It had got cold and our breath began to condense when we crossed the calmer side street with the roses growing by the wayside some of them still flowering in light pink between little red rose hips. Parking cars narrowed the walkway, so you let yourself fall behind me, your hand barely touching my back, like a whisper. When we walked by the heritage-protected building adjacent to the horse race lanes, the air was redolent of spices and something frying. You said you'd be looking forward to us cooking something together when we return. At the entrance of the park, an even greater variety of autumn-colored leaves dappled the ground. We took the path into the woods, leading towards the Edwardian school garden. The still leafy treetops blocked out the fading sunlight and withered the last bit of warmth. It smelled sweet and spicy, like soil, moist foliage and fungi. We walked side by side, our hands seeking each other, little fingers, almost touching, touching, almost touching, gently lacing, you looking to the left, me looking to the right, taking in the experience in its entirety. After a while, your hand moved up to my wrist, then it slid around my back and rested there. When you were sure that I'd let it be, you pulled me a little closer to you, and I slipped my arm beneath yours to wrap it around your back. We stepped out from under the treetops and reached another calm side street, where we stopped to look out for cars. I felt your breath on my cheek before you kissed it, your beard soft, your lips warm and moist. I smiled and for a split moment closed my eyes. Then I turned my head in your direction to look out for cars, but your gaze captivated mine, while your left hand gently grabbed my right shoulder to turn me towards you. You lowered your head, your lips searching for mine. I could taste your sweet breath before they met, so softly, and again, and again. Then they locked, tips of tongues tasting each other, the cold forgotten. Still swaying from our first kiss, arms wrapped around each other's back, we finally looked out for those cars and crossed the calm side street to enter the school garden, which greeted us with the most beautiful autumnal bouquet. Each with our free hand, we simultaneously reached for our phones to capture the beauty presented to us. Our synchronicity made us chuckle. We perused the garden and foraged colors and pictures and medlars. At first, our hands still sought each other after every photo, but eventually we both fully concentrated on our artistic activity, looking forward to sharing the results later, knowing of the other's presence and smiling, not at each other, but knowing that the other notices. Upon the sun lowering faster, we found our way back to the entrance of the school garden. Standing by the little calm street, we put our phones away as the sun was setting. I leaned sideways until my body found yours. You offered me your arm, and I hugged it with both of mine, feeling the warmth of your body against the cold of the darkening park. After looking out for cars, we crossed the street and stepped beneath the treetops, walking faster.
to beat the dropping temperatures. Back by the entrance of the park, we stopped to turn around one last time. I stretched and lifted myself to the tips of my toes so I could reach your cheek. I felt your warmth on my cold lips that softly landed on your skin. When I pulled back again, your hand slid behind my neck, warm and strong, to hold me up so your lips could find mine. In a long, warm kiss, you melted into me. With a smile on my face, I walked home through the cold at a fast pace, by the horse racing lanes, the refugee home, and then taking the turn past the front yards of the single family houses. People were coming home from work and we exchanged evening greetings and smiles as the street lamps got turned on. When I crossed the main street at a different traffic light, the headlights of the cars illuminated the still flowering asters by the wayside. I turned into the street in front of my block and walked along the rows of apartment houses until I reached mine to walk down the narrow street that leads to the entrance of the house I live in. I hefted myself up the stairs. When I unlocked the door and entered my flat, I came home to me. I saved the pictures and cooked a dinner that warmed my heart and soul. Then I sat down to write this letter to tell you about the walk I took with you in my heart and to thank you that you brought me home to me.